Hi guys, I'm going to give you a bit of an introduction into hypothesis testing um, and why we might want to do that. So I'm going to just a PowerPoint to show you here that I hope will um, make things a little bit clearer for you. Alright, so the first thing about hypothesis testing is what we're doing, we're testing to see if uh, a claim is a valid claim based on the information that we do have. Now, uh, essentially it's really almost seeing if our claim lies within our confidence interval. That's, that's another way of looking at it. So the hypothesis testing, uh, basically you'll have a statement about something to be true or not true, right? and then what you'll do is you'll need to pick a thing called the null hypothesis. Now the, the reason why we use a null hypothesis is it's a little bit like a backdoor uh, proof. Okay, If we can prove that the null hypothesis is rejected, then or the, you know it's the opposite hypothesis, then we can actually uh, accept the the claim. Does that make sense? So the alternative of hypothesis, the one that's going to be considered uh, the opposite to the null hypothesis, uh, and we're going to use the symbols for that. So the alternative hypothesis, the one that we believe to be true, or what we're trying to be true, but we're trying to to, to prove it to be true by saying that the null hypothesis is actually rejected. All right. So interesting concept. Now. We certainly have to pick a significance level when we start talking about this. So uh, if we did a 5% significance level, when we start looking at our rejection region here in the grey, that would be uh, obviously our significance divided by 2, if this were, if we're doing a two-tail test. Um, so therefore that would give us our Z value of negative 1.96 and 1.96. So I think we're familiar with that. There are three different different types of tests you can do. You can do a two-tailed test where you're looking at something not being equal to that claim. There's one where you want your claim to be less than, and then you basically you have your five percent down here instead of your two and a half percent, and then another claim where it's above. Okay, and therefore that will change your Z value, but uh, obviously our calculator does that for us anyway. So if the said statistic falls in some interval, which um, supports alternative hypothesis, we reject the null hypothesis, uh, and that's called the rejection region. So if it fell in that grey area, then that's in the rejection region. So if the test statistic falls uh, in some interval where um, it supports a null hypothesis, we'll fail to reject the null hypothesis, and so therefore we will have to accept it. So um, we'll make that clear when we go through the problem. So here's a problem. So it's claimed that exercise will reduce your heart rate. Before exercise, the mean is 75 beats per minute with a standard deviation of 3.7. After exercise, uh, a sample of 20 day yields the mean heart rate of 70 beats per minute. So the claim is that we've actually reduced our heart rate. Okay, so when we start looking at the information that's really important in here, um, this is what we're going to do. So the first step, or the second step, is to um, write down our null hypothesis, and that is that our mean heart rate is in fact 74 beats per minute. Right? The null hypothesis is um, should be that the, we're not really being affected by um, by exercise. Okay. The alternative hypothesis is that it is actually in fact, and that should be a U by the way is in fact less than 74 beats, beats per minute. All right, So that's what we're actually claiming, that our mean heart rate's dropped to be less than 74. So this is a one-tailed test. All right? So again, that shouldn't be there. So what we know is that our area over here at a 5% significance level, we're looking at that being 5%, which would make that equal to negative 6.45. So this is our rejection region. This is our acceptance region here, okay, if you keep that in mind. All right, let's do the next bit. We need to work out what our test statistic is. So if you go to Z-Test, where you do all this information, okay, all right, we need to change that to um, basically make it, uh, should be the less than, okay, which is the middle one here. All right, so when I did my print screen, it didn't quite work properly. So our mean was 7.4, our standard deviation, or oh, 74, our standard deviation is 3.7, our sample one we're talking about is 70, and we did a sample size of 20. So when we do that, we get on our calculator a Z value 
of 4.834. Now we know that our, our rejection region is negative 1.645. So what happens is that is actually going to fall inside our rejection region, isn't it? All right, so if that falls inside our rejection region, all right, we have to reject the null hypothesis and we have to accept the alternative hypothesis. Does that make sense? Right, so in that particular case, then we can make a claim that we accept the fact that exercise has, in fact, reduced our heart rate. All right, second problem. This is one, the, the previous one we did was for... Um, using our mean value, the second one's going to be looking for a proportion. So a newspaper article states that two out of three South Australians do not know when daylight saving starts. A survey of 2,467 South Australians is conducted. Of those surveyed, 1,608 do not know when daylight saving starts. Okay, so we've got a proportion situation. So step B will be to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is that it's two thirds of the population don't know when daylight saving starts. That's our uh, null hypothesis. Our alternative hypothesis is that it's not equal to that proportion. All right, so um, I think that makes sense, hopefully. So we need to work out what our test statistic is. So now what you need to do is go to test and you have to go to one prop Z test, okay, in your category, which is number five. Okay, you need to put the information in there. Okay, so our proportion um, is in, put in there. And so therefore what we've got is the 1,608, uh, 2,467, and we're saying it's not equal to in this particular case. So when we do that, right, we're going to get, um, remember it's two thirds is 0.667. All right, we're going to get a Z statistic of negative 1.567, you know, roughly what it's going to be. Okay, so when we start looking at the following, that region, so since the following statistic does not fall in the rejection region, we accept the null hypothesis and we reject the alternative hypothesis. Okay, because that value there is not less than uh, the negative 1.96, okay? So that falls actually in the acceptance region, all right? So we we have to reject the, um, the alternative hypothesis there, all right? So hopefully that actually helps you. I've just got another one quickly to show you, another example uh, on another PowerPoint. So, and if I start from this particular side, Okay, so here are really the six key steps when you look at a hypothesis testing. So you're stating the null hypothesis, the alternative, you're choosing your significance level and your sample size, you're determining the appropriate test statistics that you're doing, you're determining what the critical values are that divide your rejection region and your non-rejection region. So we're collecting data, compute the values of the test statistics, and then once we've got it, we're making a conclusion about whether we'll accept or reject our null hypothesis. So here's an example. The test claim is that uh, that the true mean number of television sets in the US homes is equal to three. So we're going to assume a significance level there of uh, 0.8. All right, so, oh, no, that's our standard deviation <coughs> is 0.8. So what we're going to do is we're going to state our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. So we're saying that the mean is in fact three. Our so I'll go back um, previous page. Um, and our alternative hypothesis is not equal to three. So this is going to be a two-tailed test, but it's not equal to. We simply specify the desired level. So we're going to do it at five percent, and we're going to choose a sample of hundred TVs to test. Right, so go to the next bit. Um, so when we do a critical value, now remembering that we're going to do this value on our um, on our calculator. All right, so this equates to oh, what's going on here. Um, this equates to a value a a, a z test statistic of negative two. So keep that in mind. So if we've got a Z statistic of negative two, now if we're doing it at the 95% level, well that actually falls inside our rejection region. So that means that we have to reject the null hypothesis 
and accept the alternative hypothesis, don't we? All right. So, in this particular case, all right, since we reject the null hypothesis, we can conclude that there is sufficient evidence that the mean number of TVs is not, in fact, equal to three TVs. All right. So, there's a, a quite a simple example again, looking at using your rejection region process. All right. So. Um, I hope this sort of helps you think about how you're going to set this sort of question out. I do plan to do a couple of these on the board in class. So um, if you can have a, have a look at the question, see if you can work your way through it. Um, I think probably this setting out needs to be um, as per what you might be expected to do in the exam. So I'll show you a couple of examples from the exams in class. Right, so good luck with these questions. If you need some help, make sure you always come and see me. I'm certainly willing to help you make sure you get this. All right, see ya.